Hey, what's up guys? Uh, this is Sanchez here. Just want to go ahead and do another charting session on my phone. Uh, obviously, as you guys can tell, I do a lot of my charting on my phone. Okay, so let's go ahead and get right into it. Uh, looking at uh, Australian dollar versus Japanese yen. Um, again, we're looking through the history. What has it done? Okay, okay, okay. So you just want to find out, you know, what was the history of price action? Uh, that's going to give you an idea of where we're going. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and get right into it. So first thing that I see is the three Elliott wave pushes. Okay, so we'll go ahead and start off with that. We got one here, retrace, two here, retrace, three here, retrace. All right, and then you have your correction. Okay, so that's our one push, two push, three push. Okay, that's one retracement, two retracement. Okay, that's your Elliott wave. So immediately that's what we have there. Okay, so now we know that we're at the end of our cycle. Well, we're obviously after the end of our three push cycle. Okay, so where do we what do we do with this knowledge? So next, we go ahead and draw a trend line. Again, we're using H4. Oh, you can use H1, whatever. Uh, start at the bottom, and you can see we have a sharp incline up to the upside. Okay, that's normal. Uh, typically, a sharper uh, sharper uptrend means you know stronger. How sharp? If it's sharper, that means the show's strength about uh, that pair. Okay, so if Australian versus Japanese went up really high, that means okay, the Australian was doing very good at that particular time. All right, so how do we treat this? All right, so we broke our uptrend. Cool. So now we're looking for reversal to the downside. Okay, but as you guys know, the way that I teach is uh, break, retest, continuation. That's that's like the Bible for me. All right, so we broke it. We're gonna retest it, and then we're gonna go down for continuation. Okay, so uh, because we were in the uptrend, remember we were in the uptrend. Now we're breaking down for the downtrend. Okay, so what I see here immediately is a head and shoulder pattern uh, happening. Obviously, okay, so you have a shoulder here, you have a head here, you're gonna have another shoulder here, and then you have the continuation. So this is where multiple things tie in together, right? So we had a continuation to the upside after the three pushes it's now broke our upside push and then uh it's going to retest it okay it's going to retest our uh trend line and then come back down so confluence would be a head and show pattern on a trend line breakage right um so now what we can do is map out where is our uh, our key levels okay so if we want to go ahead and mark out our key levels let's go ahead and start doing that Obviously, this is one right here, right at the neckline, okay? So that's your neckline. Uh, let's see if I can move that a little bit higher. Just a tad uh, to this candle wick. I like that right there. Okay, next one. Remember, we're on the four hour right now. Okay, so next one's going to be like right below here. Boop, right there. Oh. Okay, again, if you guys remember, why do how do I choose my trend lines? Okay, because we have candle wicks pointing uh, from the down direction, and then we have candles pointing from the up direction. Okay, so whenever we have a trend line, I like to validate by a push from both sides. This what this is how I choose my trend lines, my support resistance. Okay, when I get respect from both ends. All right, so uh, we got we it does meet that criteria. Okay. So now we're going to go ahead and add in our other uh, trend lines. Looks like one's right here. Uh, maybe. Actually, so oh, looks pretty strong right there. That one. And then we got another one on top of that. Uh, let's see. It looks right right here-ish. Okay. So just go ahead and line up with our wicks. Again, boom, perfect. Now sometimes we won't have um, we won't have pressure to our trend line from both sides, um, and what I mean is, you know, I like to do up and down. So sometimes we just have ups, right? So we have wicks up there, wicks up there, wicks up there. So we have we have wick rejections. Okay, so that's good enough for me to pick that as a zone. Okay, so now obviously uh, the way that I trade again. Um, just for example, you know, if we have a, tr a zone here and a zone here, if I'm buying, I'm buying here, 
buying here, buying here, exiting here, exiting here, exiting here. That's how I trade my zones. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Uh, obviously, this is an H4 time frame, so that's like 100 pips each each direction that I just drew. You know what I mean? So that could be uh, that could be 100 pips. 200 pips 300 pips 400 pips in that range before it broke down to the downside okay so that would have been 400 if he was trading that zone as an example okay so you can see here our head and shoulder it lines up in our zones right our shoulders does you see this zone right here that's his zone. okay it's his own trade again in the future that's his own trade all right so it's, it's very important to remember uh we're looking for a retest of our trend line so that second shoulder right here is our retest of that trend line. And that's where we enter the continuation to the downside. Okay. So that's a real quick look at AJ. Um, I mean, it's really not much to that, guys. I, I did a buy limit in there. It kind of got late. I got late to the party. I was hoping that it would come, come down. And uh, I was hoping it would come down a little bit further. Uh, before it went back up because again I set my buy limit after I noticed oh crap we're heading up for head and shoulders um, so I may have missed it obviously I set the buy limit so just in case it did go down and then went back up but I think I missed that train no worry uh, never get it late never join the party late okay remember price what what how I was explained to from one of my mentors is the way that we see okay I like to trade price action why because that's what's going on in the chart at that very time okay indicators are lagging what does that mean that means that they are a copy of what you're seeing on the price chart okay they are a copy of they're 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 an algebraic equation based on formulas that are based on price action okay so there's always gonna be a lag okay so that's why you see here that my moving averages are so far behind that's why my Bollinger Band is so far behind because it's an average all right so um, now let's take it a step further what is price action actually what price action is also in itself delayed now how can that be well because these are more or less receipts these are people buying and selling these markets right so their receipt is a reflection of what price is price is a receipt it's already that happened so if you start using indicators you know you're now two steps behind because price itself is lagging not including your moving average which is lagging so just something to think about uh, so if, if this party is already going up you know don't join in here you know don't join at the, at the now even though you're expecting it to come up here don't join in late all right you're gonna get screwed every time or if not right away eventually so what I'm going to do now since I've already missed this party right like damn Sanchez you get all this space to gain profit right yeah sure but um, I'm, I'm not trying to do that I don't want to do that I want to trade what I think is going to be a downtrend uh, if I go to the daily you can see exactly why you see it's the downtrend um, overall overall we're in a downtrend so so here we can see what's happening I, I preach it in all my videos we had a consolidation okay do 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 consolidation did what it broke down okay so since it broke down what do I want to do I want to sell with the breakdown I want to sell with the bears right so we're going downwards so this is where I want to sell. Enter, 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 enter. Look at all these places to enter at. All right, where do I take profit? Uh, take profit, uh, take profit, take profit, and then you know our new ones coming in that I'm entering right now, take profit. I'm just gonna keep going uh, until I see reasons to believe otherwise. So this is the daily chart, okay? So daily, we're going down. So we want to enter with the down, right? All right, so let's go back to, uh, so you can see here, yeah. Uh, okay, buy limit, yeah, right there. Okay, so H4, uh, we're obviously going back up. So I'm going to go ahead and enter a sell limit. Now, there's a few ways. You can do it just purely by zone to zone. Okay, so what I mean is I can go ahead and do this. Um, grab my arrow. All right, where do I think price is going to go? Okay, I already decided this is my zone right here. So 84. 84 flat is where I'm going to sell my set limit. Okay. Sell limit. Uh, we're going to do 0.10. 0.10. 0.10. 0.10. 0.10. 0.10. 0.10. 0.10. 0.10. 0.10. 0.10. 0.10. 0.10. 0.10. 0.10. 0.10. 0.10. 0.
Uh, and then we're gonna do sell them at uh, what do we say 85? Was it 85? Shoot, I don't remember. Let's find out. So, oh, uh, 84. Okay, 84. 84. Okay. So yeah, our sell limit right there, 84 flat. I like even numbers for buy and sell limits, buy stops, sell stops. I like even numbers, and I like to cut it short. Uh, and what I mean by that is I don't want to, I don't want to set my sell limit at the top of this, right? I don't want to set my sell limit there. I want to set it. I want to actually set it in the noise, okay? That way I get hit, okay? I want to increase my chances of getting hit or activating rather. Okay, so now that is one way that you can do that, okay? The other way is you can go ahead and start setting up your Fibonacci's. All right, let's go ahead and do that. Uh, let's go. Do, 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 do. Boop, right there. Swing high to swing low. And, uh, cool. So this is one way you can do it. Let's see. Swing high. Yeah, that's another way you can do it. Then, then you're, you're you're actually selling it will be at the 23.6. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna do that though. So I'll leave this guy down here from wick to wick. Very pretty much just wick to wick. Uh, you can see here that there's actually noise right there at the 23.6 line. You can see. Um, that's a busy area right there. That's a respected area that mine is. Okay, cool. So good to know that. Now, uh, if I want to know how high is it going, right? That was that was the overall move that I just measured. Okay, I can also measure the current move with Fibonacci. Okay, so let's go ahead and do. Uh, what should we do? Let's try and get this wick to this wick just to see what happens. Okay. And let's go ahead and change the color of that. So we can keep an eye on things. All right, we'll go to green or whatever, olive. Okay. So our olive level, the 38.2, you can see that that's where I'm projecting my head and shoulder to take place. Okay, so 38.2. That's, that's where I'm projecting. So that's the current swing high, the swing low that I measured. Okay. So what I am thinking is pr price is going to go up to 38.2, and then it's going to continue downwards uh, to the 138.2, which is going to be like somewhere right there or something like that. Uh, and that's pretty much it, guys. I mean, it's not really much else to it, I don't think. Let's make it simple. Um, let me know if you guys have any other questions, okay?